Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us in uh, of uh, in day two of PyCon India 2021. And uh, this is uh, an yet another experience sharing session. Uh, in this session, we have Manaswini das, das with us, who would be speaking about women in tech careers taking that extra leap. Manaswini is from Bhuvaneshwar and is currently working with Red Hat middleware team in Bangalore, India. She is an active open source user and contributor since 2017. She has participated both as a mentee and a mentor in various open source programs, including GCI, uh, GSOC, and RHOSC. Uh, she is an outreach alumnus and a Processing Foundation Fellow. She loves uh, sharing her knowledge and sketching. Uh, by the way, she is also the chapter lead of Pi Ladies Bhuvaneshwar. Uh, welcome, Manaswini, on this experience sharing uh, session. Uh, over to you. Thanks a lot, Sukanya. Thanks a lot for the warm introduction. I hope I'm audible. So first of all, apologies for the background. I can't really help it. And uh, StreamYard doesn't have a, you know, full fledged, you know, covering the background stuff. So kindly put up with that. Cool, then I'll be starting uh, since we are already at the top of the hour. So thanks a lot for tuning in for today's talk. So I have been there at your place as a student until two years back, and I understand your problems about uh, getting an internship, uh, landing your first gig, and you know, uh, how do you know about opportunities and uh, stuff like that, where students, they get tend to constantly struggle and you know, come across difficulties and come across that loophole, the uh, infamous loophole called, you know, you need to get an experience to get, uh, you know, to get an internship and you net and vice versa, of course. So like that. So if you want to be a self-taught developer and want to land a job, this is like just the right uh, right platform for you. I hope you get some tips and tricks from here. So I wouldn't say that I'm a subject matter expert, but I'll try and share some, tip, uh, share some tips uh, uh, just because I've been through all of this. So I'd like to share some tips and tricks that worked for me. So there were times when I didn't even land interviews, but I kind of refined my you know whole uh, approach to it so that it could be, uh, you know, how do you call that? It could be uh, presentable in, I could be presentable in a good manner and I can improve and in interviews and, you know, maybe make the best out of the whole interview journey. So, yep, I hope uh, this is of some help to you. Cool. Whoops, I think my slide, okay, yep, there it is. Cool, so you can be anything that you want to become, of course, uh, unless you're willing to learn. So, um, so I'm not really a subject matter expert when it comes to you know other streams of engineering apart from computer science because I majored in computer science. But uh, yep, uh, I cannot speak for them. But uh, for people who are looking uh, in to venture into the software technology, I can of, uh, of obviously uh, you know share some trips, tips and tricks. So uh, you can choose any of these uh, just as you know just in this picture. Like uh, you know, um, it can be. Uh, into management, it can be data science, it can be, you know, systems engineer as well. Uh, you can dive deeper into uh, operating systems. Uh, you can also be a cybersecurity specialist, maybe uh, a database administrator, network specialist, any of that. Uh, maybe you can venture into software testing as well, all of that. So I was amazed at the, you know, spectrum of jobs are, uh, you know, the whole in engineering industry can provide. So I'm going to focus basically on the software industry because, uh, I majored in computer science, so cool. So where does it all start? So I would say uh, it all starts as a student uh, because you may all agree with me that the software jobs market is pretty evolving all the time. Like uh, frameworks come in and out. Uh, I wouldn't say languages are replaced by languages because languages stay the same, but the frameworks are kind of changing all the time. So uh, uh, I know many of you think that the theory that you study isn't that important, okay? Uh, and uh, that that may be less interesting to you as well. But uh, what if you try to make it more interesting for yourself? Like, uh, you know, suppose you're reading the OSI model and, you know, computer networking, uh, which is a very important topic, topic, by the way, if you're interviewing and that uh, you're like, you will uh, definitely get a question, like guaranteed you'll get a question on networking uh, if you are, you know, uh, looking to, any, any technology job, I would say. So uh, it is very important. So yes, theory is important, but try to correlate that with your day-to-day -day stuff, like uh, you know, the, like the transport layer and OSI model that we have. 
so pretty sure that you might have come across that uh, you know preparing a tls handshake thing uh, in the you know bottom left corner of your screen when you are trying to open in, open your gmail right so yeah try to understand how that works because many times even i was surprised uh, when i first you know um, uh, appeared for interviews i was asked the questions that i used in my daily life and i was almost surprised like okay i know this works this way but i don't know what works uh like how does it work under the hood so that's what they ask okay so uh yeah be, be prepared for those questions so yep try to be curious and try to uh learn the background stuff of everything like uh, you know how message queuing works how broadcasting works things like that how youtube works under the hood right so try to be curious and always feed your curiosity by the way so uh pretty sure once you dive deeper you'll be able to understand that uh, you know there's more to learn than whatever you have discovered okay so there is the sea of knowledge okay so i have added this picture for your uh, for some inspiration so uh, if you're thinking to start a company of your own as well that's completely fine and you can go ahead with it but make sure that you have your feasibility study and your market research before before you get started so i think being an, being an entrepreneur is like a pretty tough job because it's like wearing a wearing a you know a lot of hats and you know uh, doing everything on your own in the beginning so good luck to that by the way hats off to all the entrepreneurs who are doing this cool uh, if you ask me how to get started then i would say uh, get started as a student so of course it's your engineering life it won't come uh, like twice <laughs> or maybe thrice but uh, make sure you enjoy it but uh, i think you have ample time to enjoy and you know ample time to discover everything and explore things on your own and you know come across topics that interest you so okay uh, uh, it's completely fine if uh, you don't choose this of course but uh, i would say that um this is my journey this is just my experience so this is what helped me you know uh, further my career so it is very difficult to land your first internship or your first gig as said earlier so you have ample time to explore and try new things you can try everything so when i first started i would say that uh, i ventured into everything okay uh, i i thought it was very late i was just a sophomore and i didn't know git i didn't know anything i was just simply attending classes blindly and not even you know uh, wondering about how this all of this stuff uh, that we are surrounded with works okay so uh, yep so it was uh, but i made it a point to you know attend some um, meetups local meetups from google developers group women tech makers i'm pretty sure it's happening all across the country by the way defest is coming soon uh, be uh, on the lookout for that so i think uh, i uh, attended that and i joined a club that was there in my college i was lucky enough to have a club i would say so i joined there and then i met a lot of people who were just starting off then i got to learn git then i started with uh, you know participating in hacktoberfest participating in competitions and uh, you know applying to fellowships that uh, and scholarships that i didn't get through of course but that did pave the way for the things that was coming coming by so i at beginning in the beginning you won't believe i even tried android programming i tried data science i explored into everything okay so then i started developing things on my own you know learning about networking learning about uh you know building some stuff on my own uh how jquery works why react came into the picture and stuff like that so yes so i first uh, i gave my first co first interview like first interview ever <laughs> uh, so uh, Uh, for a startup in bhubneshwar so then i uh, they gave me three coding questions as far as i remember and uh, since i was just exploring it was followed by an html css quiz as well but i have a goldfish brain so i don't have a very good memory as well <laughs> so i wasn't able to uh, you know exactly answer the classes and or uh, all that stuff that comes along with you know css so i wasn't able to answer that but i was able to you know answer two of those three coding questions um, and uh, then that was my first experience that i gained ever thank god they had faith uh, on me as a fresher and also i got to build projects on message queuing and you know writing some scripts here and there so that was my first you can say my first uh, gate that i opened to development so that's how it all started for me so once you start exploring uh, you get to you know build projects of my own and you know simultaneously when you build projects uh, your concepts get clearer and uh, but i would say one thing that i would like to add here one tip is don't just blindly follow tutorials okay so 
uh, even if you follow tutorials and just treat it as the base of your project okay build things on top of that project and you know bring in your own ideas and how you can you know improve it and make it as uh, close to the industry standard as possible like as close to the other apps that you you know interact on a daily basis so i would say basically build a roadmap for your project and if you're looking for project ideas then i get i think hackathons are the best place to start because they get very nice uh, very cool problem statements and you know uh, you get to uh, you know tweak things on your own come across some last minute changes as well so i i think participating in hackathons give you a lot of you know room to develop projects uh, you know uh, bring your own ideas to into practical implementation and uh, obviously it improves your problem solving skills and also meeting deadlines i guess yes so i also participated in a 24 hour hackathon which didn't last 24 hours i would say it lasted for 36 hours but the development was all over by 24 hours but we had to wait for some certain means, uh, reasons but yeah so that was my first uh, first ever hackathon experience as well i think uh, you should get that experience you should uh, you know uh, go to a hackathon at least once in your life if you are you know thinking to become a developer i think it will be an entire new door for you entire you know new door of opportunities so then then once you get a grasp of it uh, you can start contributing to open source i think it's a good place to start uh, if you are looking to learn best practices in coding because uh, it's used by people all around the globe right so uh, yeah, so open source is a good uh, good place to start if you want to know the best practices in coding, all the industry standards and everything, because uh, they are widely known, you know, well-known projects. So I'm pretty sure that they follow the best practices. Also, if you can join a local meetup or conference or club, it's a good, uh, you know, good, uh, good to have. And of course, uh, if you don't have access to any of these, you can always build your own study group. So cool. Um, so if you ask me why open source software, I included this uh, in my talk uh, last year. <laughs> uh, that is, you know, uh, uh, you know this, right? Why open source? Because Windows is enterprise, as you must all know. We need antivirus software to, you know, use Windows. And when I first switched to Linux in, I guess, late 2017 or so, I was like searching for, uh, you know, antivirus software for Linux. <laughs> because I was so uh, I was so used to, you know, using antivirus software. Then, then uh, the people around me, they started like, Okay, what is antivirus software? First of all, if you're looking for Linux, so yep. Uh, talking about macOS, I think uh, the security level is uh, you know it lies somewhere between Linux or Windows. But yeah, this is some food for thought for you. And I also included this in the last uh, last year's talk. Like if you're looking for opportunities, you can go for mentorships or fellowships. Uh, maybe you can try outreachy, but uh, you have to be an underrepresented group in tech to apply for it. And you needn't be a student, first of all. That's a good thing to note. You can also apply for Google Summer of Code. I think it's the most popular uh, you know, open source program out there. And you can also apply for Girl Script Summer of Code if you are into competitions. And uh, uh, you can just get started with Hacktoberfest as well. It's right on, around the corner. Like uh, You get to submit, I guess, four pull requests. I think it was increasing. Uh, to five or six at a particular point of time but i think it's constant now it's for uh like all around the month of october you'll be uh creating pull requests but uh you know um if you if you manage to you know create four uh, valid pull requests not the you know not just for the sake of creating pull requests then you get to get a limited edition hacktoberfest t-shirt so yeah i think that's a good place to start even i started with hacktoberfest so yep uh, and also uh you know uh, participating in open source projects and you know participating in hackathons it makes way for new ideas okay and uh, who knows you can even start uh, your own startup maybe on the basis of that idea or maybe you start a product or maybe a service also you can be a mentor or a maintainer in any of the projects and you can take the power of the community forward and you also get to you know speak at conferences just like we all are right now like meeting in a conference and you know meeting like-minded people and obviously, as mentioned earlier, you can uh, you get to learn the best practices in coding. Followed by that, if you're looking for uh, you know paper issue or paper contribution kind of benefits or single contribution economic benefits, then you can um, go to GitPay. Like there are issues uh, and uh, you know pay for that issue as well. You can go there, but I think it's uh, pretty saturated. I mean, um, as soon as an issue comes, it gets taken away right away. There is GitHub sponsor as well. Uh, so and also if you're into cyber security or, or into you know quality assurance or testing then bug bounty programs are the way to go as well i think it's pretty popular on linkedin i see a post every day 
for people winning uh, you know bug bounty programs so yes if you're looking for uh, you know uh, open source programs i think uh, this is a very exhaustive list uh, from tapashwini pathak uh, so yep you can go to this and if you're not into competitions if you don't want to give yourself that much stress that's completely fine as well um, uh, i have attached some links for you know blogs and you know uh, some projects if you are looking to get started if you're looking for language wise or open source projects uh, then i've attached this link as well the first one and then if you're looking for other projects you can read these blogs and uh, there are even you know uh, projects listed by google open source as well cool moving on uh, once you have created that you know uh, that whole uh, skill set and your own uh, level of experience with your skill set then uh, you can go ahead with job search and interviewing so it is very important to have a public profile on any platform like github uh, or any other open source you know platform that is uh, uh, available publicly so and also if you are into competitive programming you can replace this with your uh, you know um, code forces and or any other platform that you are using just like just like we have in github i think uh, a lot of other competitive programming platforms like code forces have this you know whole contribution kind of heat map kind of thing that we have green dots <laughs> and also yellow dots uh, during halloween and stuff like that yep so yeah you can uh, make sure that your profile is public and everything everyone is going to you know kind of go to that profile every time you send your resume and stuff like that and link that to your resume yes so uh, often some interviewers ask you to walk them through some past code that you might have written on github that has happened to me as well so also just putting the tutorial projects won't help so because if you just put the tutorial projects and don't understand how it works under the hood then it is going to be a huge problem for you because you won't be able to you know uh, maybe uh, answer the questions and tackle uh, what they want to know and they may they may ask for you know um, optimized way of you know rewriting that code or maybe refactoring so yep i would say that uh, play around the code uh, even if you're using a tutorial that's completely fine but play around the code and try to build in some things of your own because many a times i face this question many a times like uh, what are the challenges or what is the most uh, most difficult uh, challenge that you have faced as a programmer so yep uh, have something in your mind if uh, you're willing to say that i think i got this question the most so yep and also if you're looking for jobs try cold emailing i mean just write mails but make sure that you invest some time in all of the emails okay so just don't just you know copy a template and because uh, that will make them feel everyone wants wants to feel special okay because no one wants to feel ordinary okay so that is human nature okay so uh, they get thousands of these you know emails and or messages on linkedin as well so try to give uh, um the review of a product or maybe a service that they have developed and you think that you connect with that service a lot so i would uh, say that uh, you know try for a company that has uh, um that has developed projects and or you know uh, developed services that you are interested in or might have used on your own i think uh, that provides a good uh, you know good place to start as well so the same applies to linkedin as well uh, you can reach out to your alumni as well that's where uh, you know uh having a peer club helps by the way so yep uh that helped me you know uh, come across a lot that opened a new door of opportunities for me i would say definitely uh, be in touch with your alumni and you know uh let them know of your troubles i'm pretty sure they will help because they have been in your place so also keep a tab on all the jobs and interviews i didn't used to do that i used to like completely you know blindly apply on jobs and every time you used to get a call i was like okay i applied for it and stuff like that but again nobody wants to feel ordinary uh, so i would say keep a tab on all the jobs that you are applying to and also keep a tab on the interviews like uh, like create a sheet i would say once i started this my interview life became a bit easier so i would say this is like a very good point that you can take away from here is like keep a tab of uh, what companies are reaching out to you and uh, to what level of interview you were able to qualify and stuff like that so that will help you you know ha help the help you keep a tab of all the interviews that is going on and also don't repeat the same mistake that is while interviewing try and make a note of all the questions that you won't, weren't able to answer okay uh, or maybe the topics cool so yeah and uh, try and you know educate yourself and you know be a better version uh, by the next interview 
uh, so that you don't get stuck on the same interview time and again, uh, like same question time and again. And by the way, uh, another tip that I would say about interviewing is that, uh, you know, develop a habit of continuous learning. Uh, you'll obviously develop a habit of it uh, once, you, once you get started. But uh, once you face a few interviews, you may feel at ease. But also one more thing that if you're, if you're just trying to, you know, um, remember some uh, terms on the internet and, you know, putting that in your answer, it's most likely that the next next question is about that term. So be prepared. Don't use any other term that you're not aware of just for the sake of throwing jargon. Don't do that. I have paid a big price for it. Even I failed a lot of interviews for it. So I would say that don't repeat that mistake. Cool. <laughs> so uh, here are some resources if you're looking to get started and you know prepare for interviews. Uh, Interview Bit is a very good platform in order to you know clear your concepts. And also, it provides the provision of mock interviews. If you are uh, too nervous to get into a real interview, then you can always, you know, have mock interviews with other peers and, uh, you know, uh, improve yourself. The next thing is obviously lead code. I think you have heard this a number of times. Uh, even Anushi yesterday, she mentioned about lead code. So you needn't necessarily, you know, be a, a competitive programming you know uh, expert to do this you can just learn the concepts like database and uh, sql relational database all of that because you get a lot of those questions so it also ha is a very good platform to prepare for interviews cool moving on uh, so yeah i forgot to read that quote that is a job interview is not a test of your knowledge but to your ability but your ability to use it at the right time so even if you don't get through interviews just believe that there are better interviews and better companies ahead and go ahead because I have been disillusioned and disheartened as well. I thought that I'm not, uh, you know, maybe not carved out for this sort of a job because I went for the hard stuff. I went for off campus interviews and I failed a lot of interviews and I went in this went into the slush as well. So I would totally say that, you know, hang in there. Uh, you have hundreds like you and, uh, you know, they understand you. So all the best. So, uh, yep. Uh, Talking about interviews, like interviewing is a lot like talking, but you have to guide the conversation. You have to know what you want and go about getting it. So again, that is the key, because as I said earlier, if you are just trying to throw jargons and things that you have marked up or maybe memorized and you don't know the concepts, then it's you're going to pay a huge price for it. So cool. Uh, that's all about interviews. So after you land a job, what you have to do? Uh, of course, keep upskilling and then keep exploring new ideas. And I wouldn't really recommend to stick to a particular framework because frameworks keep changing. You can stick to a particular language like Python or JavaScript. But the fundamental stuff always remains the same. So keep getting a grasp of those fundamentals is going to help you in the long run. And also, uh, you know, keep sharing your ideas, maybe, you know, watching videos, keep sharing ideas and also, you know, getting new ideas. Like maybe watch some talks on YouTube or maybe attend conferences like this or maybe, uh, you know, write articles of your own. So. Uh, also, you may have to rebound to job search if you're not happy with the job. So be prepared for that as well. So life is full of surprises. So it can throw anything at you. So, <laughs> yep. So uh, nowadays, software engineers, that's what I've noticed that uh, nowadays the job descriptions, they mention everything, starting from testing to DevOps to development, everything. So uh, keep a tab of the state of the art trends that's going on and, you know, try and learn things on your own. So that is going to help you a lot. And of course, pay it forward because uh, try and help other job seekers uh, because I was helped by someone who was not even job seeking at that point. But I thought that uh, he's a good person and uh, uh, he's very more experienced and, you know, have someone to review uh, your resume and or your emails and or your messages because that's going to help a lot. And, you know, pay special atten attention to every job application because uh, uh that's going to help as well so yep don't forget to do that pay special attention to all the job interviews i mean uh the emails and other messages because that is going to decide whether you are going to land an interview or not in the first place so here is some inspiration for you uh the first picture is of Adela lovelace she's considered to be the first programmer who explained how the notion of a specific engine could transition calculation to computation. So, yep, she's one of the most famous women in technology. And every second Tuesday of October is kind of uh, celebrated as the Adele of List Day to celebrate all women in STEM. And again, uh, coming to Grace Hopper, I'm pretty sure you have attended Grace Hopper 
celebration and yeah maybe grace up a celebration that happens in the us so she's the person who this uh, conference is named after so she designed a compiler which translated co programmers instructions into computer code so you know that's when we hadn't realized the power of computers so yep learning about them gives a lot of inspiration and you know it helps because they paved the way and obviously this helps this will help you you know learning about them and you know reading about them will help you get some inspiration as well as you know keep you going forward as well so some of the inspirations uh in, in we talked about history so why not talk uh, talk about something uh, some women um who are acing it uh, in the present right there's reshma sojani founder and ceo of girls who code then there is suzanne vojicki not sure if i'm pronouncing it correct she is the ceo of youtube so yeah there is inspiration everywhere of course i wasn't able to include all the list everything in the list uh, and if you want to learn more you can always you know read their books uh read content read blog posts about them to get an inspiration there is indira noi too uh, and if you are active on twitter you may uh, if you are into javascript then you may know ali spital and uh, emma bostian uh, the founders of the ladybug podcast they create contents uh, books project podcasts and also you know put posts on twitter that can help you following them following the right people on twitter will uh, you know get you closer to where you want to be so and also help you connect with like minded people by the way so make the most of twitter cool uh, so again this is a picture for your inspiration i would say hang in there you'll be able to do it cool time for some questions i hope i didn't bore you and you were able to sit through it and hopefully you get some instructions get some help from my experience cool thank you manaswari for this amazing and interesting session uh, when we are almost close to the top of the hour maybe we can take one or two questions at this moment uh, Well, we have a lot of inspiration. I'm going to bring it up. So, cheers to the, these STEM heroes. <laughs> Thank you so much yeah. for this. Okay, so we have our first question: um, How to handle job search fatigue uh, from another? Okay, uh, so that is going to happen a lot. I would say. uh you wouldn't land your first uh, job in the very first interview okay so be prepared for it first of all because the world is hard and uh, you're going to face a lot of you know stuff but keep improving yourself in every interview just as i said keep a tab of uh, you know the questions that you're getting and you're not able to answer because the, the ones that you are able to answer at least you have some idea about it but the ones you're not able to answer you have no idea about it so it is going to you know if you don't uh, get that doubt cleared and you know if you don't uh, you know uh feed your curiosity on to that i'm pretty sure you'll get that in the next interview and you're gonna you know be stuck there so i would say keep a tab of the questions that you're not able to answer and obviously ask about feedback at the end of the interview like what do you think about this feedback how can i improve myself i'm pretty sure some um you know head hunters and the interviewers are uh considerate enough to uh you know tell you some tips and tricks to improve so be on the lookout for that just don't you know code under the cell and don't ask and you know don't be shy just ask whatever you can and uh, you know uh, because then i'm pretty sure that you may not meet that person again if you don't have an interview so <laughs> uh, what's the harm in asking right thanks uh, we have a next question from anshika rajiv uh, she asks uh, how to make an impact in workspaces and you join it i would say being active and being con consistent because when i uh, joined uh don't think that you are a junior developer okay there are senior developers there will always be senior developers okay the ones that you hire try to learn something about them even if someone is junior to you try to learn something from them as well so how to make an impact i would say uh you know if there is some you know local uh, local talk that is happening try and organize that try and uh, you know maybe write some blog posts that the uh, that the company blog can feature about right uh, i would say that helped a lot uh in you know creating an impact i would say i'm very active uh, um when it comes to you know organizing uh organizing any uh, talk or maybe you know uh, i'm the one uh, i'm pretty sure that that is the reason why uh, they always look up to me uh, to fill in in such cases and i think uh, um earlier i thought that okay this is just you know normal stuff i'm just being myself and stuff like that but um uh, i didn't realize the exact impact when unless uh, you know my manager started contacting me for uh, representing red hat uh, in uh, grace hopper celebration india 
so and stuff like that so uh, that's how we can create an impact like even if there is an event that's taking place uh, you know share your ideas openly you never know you they may come across some idea that they haven't thought of at the first place so be very free and give, you can say be very true to yourself and you know try and uh, be outgoing and friendly i think that helps a lot and also help the other new joiners i think uh, that is what uh, the workplaces appreciate as well a lot thanks manishwini maybe we can just take one more uh, how to know about opportunities like fellowships and or scholarships okay this is a tough one uh, i would say there is uh, scholarships.com there is scholarships for women.net and uh, you know other such resources where you can look up to and always uh, even if you are you know uh, i'm pretty sure that if you are on a club or maybe if you are attending gdg and wtm you may come across such scholarships a lot and they all often share uh, and also join the flow group uh, i think they have a flow group in facebook join that they also share opportunities there and uh, they also have a whatsapp group by the way i subscribed to that when i was in my uh, you know when i was a sofa more and uh, they also share very good fellowships and or scholarship opportunities so i would say uh even if you come across it don't just you know think that okay i'll put it for later you're not going to back to it later like i'm pretty sure try and you know save that link somewhere you know bookmark it and try and uh, you know uh, write the proposal and or the abstract and or the you know letter of motivation way before the deadline because that is going to get refined over time and uh eventually you know increase your chances of getting the fellowship and or the scholarship Thank you, Manishwini.